Hey guys, this will be video 4 for the uh, custom flying V build and I wasn't planning on doing a video tonight but I think it would be wise because I'm getting ready to do some uh, epoxy uh, putty work, filler work and I just wanted to kind of go through a few things before I got the body looking uh, too nice because right now it looks kind of rough but uh, a couple of things I want to want to hit at before before I did my router work um, I wanted to verify that my template was truly trustworthy and that I had not made any assumptions about center lines and uh, symmetry and things like that. So a safe way to go about this is um, take your poster paper and, and ver make a very precise point that's a center line. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly in center with the paper, but you just need it to be perfectly... Uh, um, it just needs to be a perfect 90 degree angle right here at the bottom because what I'm going to do is show you kind of a cowboy's way of just finding out whether your template is true or not and I use this aluminum straight edge over here but this really nice piece of mahogany is sufficient to show you uh, my reasoning I just put that uh, straight edge along the bottom and then I took my template and I, I did find the center, and I made a mark here, and I found that center there, and I made that mark there. So that is what it is. But that that's not no, that's not correct. That was when I was when I put it on the 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 uh, pine, the body. What I wanted to do to find out was I truly symmetrical. I measured from this edge here to this edge here to get that widest point, and then. I divided it by two and I think I had mentioned you know builders uh, uh, 16 and three quarter but you know mine is 16 and seven eighths so build it 16 and seven eighths if you want but um, and also mine are one and seven eighth inch diameter and I won't go into any more detail about that but I just found out that dimension from here to here 16 and seven eighths divided by two eight and seven sixteenths so I took my center from off of my center, went over eight and seven sixteenths of an inch, and then I made a perfectly um, uh, uh, 90 degree uh, ghost line. And then I made one over here. And then I laid my, my template down. And then I just started pushing the template from side to side as I was watching this uh, go up against that ghost line. Because if I made these marks based on my template, not excuse me, not necessarily a target dimension because once I built this template, I might be off at 30 second of an inch. And that and that's close enough for, for rockability and it's also close enough for rock and roll. So I just want to make certain that I get this template on center and verify that once I put it on that body, I don't route that body, you know, a little bit funky. So and and on that note once I put it up there, see, I'm just bumping up against the straight edge rather than trying to find some perfect corner and stuff like that. Just use the edge of the paper and go up against it and then um, start, uh, I'm looking at the left wing tip here and I've got it on the ghost line. Then I verified it over there. And then I came up and I made a pencil mark here and a pencil mark there, which is at the 18th fret location or the zero fret location. Then I pulled it off, and then I measured off the center line to that that uh, mark that I made. It was spot on. So not being arrogant, not bragging, but once you get that, I can I can just keep using this template because it is one hundred percent trustworthy. Okay, so uh, there you have it. And then once I did that, I went ahead and drew that location right there for the cavity. And then I drew that location for the cavity right there. In other words, I did a left hand and or a right hand version. Also, what will happen when you start doing things like that, you'll start looking at the, the guitar and its makeup and, uh, and you'll realize, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, go I'm, I'm gonna talk about weight relief a little bit, just off the cuff here. So we know that if we've got a heavy body over here 
and we're kind of panicking about, oh no, I don't want a 10 pound guitar. Well, we know that we're going to be routing out for a pickup here, a pickup there. And then if we're putting a Floyd Rose in it, whew, man, that's going to be night and day once you route through the body and then the swimming pool on the back and then your control cavity. In other words, you're going to be carving off a lot of weight. But if you're still worried, then uh, if, you want, if you want to relieve weight before you put the top on or before you put any, any of your top work, then you could go ahead and relieve weight symmetrically by uh, clamping this template on the body and doing this from the front. Okay, and take your router, just route out that cavity and go down. Don't, I wouldn't t let the back get any, any thinner than three eighths of an inch. Uh, if, if you can keep it closer to a half. Okay, so if that makes sense, and, and then you're gonna have this hole in the front and then you'll come in with a router and you'll route out a little shelf about that deep. And then you can uh, cut a little piece. Think, think of like a control cavity cover that is about three eighths of an inch thick, or about a quarter of an inch thick. And then you epoxy that in, sand it level. And then if you're, and if you're putting a real thin top on it, then you've got some support to put your, uh, in other words, you won't have to do any any additional support. That was the support to receive your uh, uh, sparkle. Okay, so or if you were going to paint it, I don't know if I'd recommend doing that. If you were going to paint the top, I'd probably recommend doing that from the bottom and then doing the epoxy work around it and sand it and sand it and epoxy it and sand it and try to feather it out. But it, it's better to have a guitar that is a really nice, comfortable target weight than it is to uh, be afraid to, you know, cut some holes in it. Okay, so let me check the time. Seven minutes. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the Bigsby anymore because I know I got cut off in the video. The only thing I will say, and I'm going to spend about five seconds with this. I'm going to be discussing whether we use a Vibramate and if we do use a Vibramate, how we fasten it to the body so that it, it is not cantilevering. Because basically this design right here is such that it fastens to the tailpiece studs, okay? And, but it, it, it cantilevers. And I need to stop talking about it. I just want to let you guys know in this series, somewhere, somewhere along the line, we're going to talk about this thing in extensive detail. And there's a real strong possibility that one of the hollow body flying V's that I build, I definitely will put, put in out and I'll even put this little worn out road worn bigs beyond there. I'll have to do a lot of shaping because I got this thing for nothing just for layout work, but I can rebuild it, put a roller up front and uh, it'd be nice. it will be pretty and it'd be gold. And then I'll do some trickery back here. But, uh, I, as I mentioned, I didn't want to throw the bigs be under the bus. Uh, and, and I kind of did that in the first video or two. So let me stop talking about that. Check the time again, eight minutes. All right, what do we, what, so, so there you have it. I drew the picture and it was just stunning. And then once I had that uh, template laying down there, I made certain that it was truly in place. And then I took my mechanical pencil. Uh, these, these, this is just, save that for your rough work, but use a real nice precise mechanical pencil and then, then, uh, just draw around it and now you can always use this piece as you're picking up uh, lumber and you're considering working with a board then you can literally like put this over here if this is machined real nice and fine on the other side you can lay it down on that line pull it all the way down to the bottom and you can make little marks and then you can even do things like this right here slide a piece of paper up under there. Keep in mind that's that's how I achieve that. You slide that piece of paper up under there, make a pencil mark there, uh, make a straight line mark right there, cut that out, cut that out, maybe cut that out, use your template. Now go now go out around in your shop looking for some some wood that, that you can feather up in there. And that's what I, that's where, that's where this came from.
Okay, that ought to make perfect sense. I just use that little piece of paper to make certain, because what was I doing? That was that was one little board, and I wanted to see if by the time I cut it on an angle, would one of the angles reverse and, and be sufficient. Why? Because this is 1800s pine. This is not this is not stuff you throw in a burn pile. These these are parts that you you machine them in there. Even if you screw up like that, and I let the jigsaw run a little bit too far when I was doing this cutout, and now I get to do some epoxy work. Show how good I am with epoxy. So let's talk about that body just a little. And uh, so you can see how rough it is. Uh, let's talk about pr the pretty stuff first. Uh, before I forget, this is very critical. That was a pretty nasty little knot, but not once I, I dropped it full of thin. Uh, I call this jet glue. This is CA glue, but you're basically, you're, you're just kind of uh, pouring. Uh, once you start pouring, uh, don't stop. L let it keep, continue to watch it as it's uh, a wicking down through that knot because what it's doing, it's literally just filling in all of the internal core. Now, obviously, it didn't go all the way through, and it may have, I can't remember, it may have been on an angle up here, but it doesn't matter because I knew that once I loaded it full of CA glue that it was just as good as solid now. And then I poured just a little bit right there and man, just almost immediately, it just started flooding all over the top. So that let me know that that knot was trustworthy to never come out. But nonetheless, I still forced a little bit of CA glue in there. There's all my uh, grandpa's nail holes where he helped my dad build this house, or, or I should say my dad helped my grandpa build this house. <laughs> and uh, my house is uh, that I live in was the house my grandfather and dad built. It was it's a it's a Frank Lloyd Wright Usonian design. It's a real cool modern house, but nonetheless they used all this old antique pine from a uh, late eighteen hundreds uh, old school house, and uh, so they demonstrate they demoed the schoolhouse and they used all this old antique pine to build the house that uh, I own now. So this is it's pretty cool to to look at these nail holes and know that that was probably where uh, my, my grandfather, that was probably a stud, and that was a toenail that went into the sole plate, <laughs> okay? And then all these nails here, who, who knows, it might have been something I did as a kid. But nonetheless, I get to fill all of those with epoxy and, and baking soda. And I'm glad I thought of that, because what I'll do is up here on the top, I'll, I'll just rub baking soda around until it continues to just uh, powder down into that. And then I'll take this jet glue and I'll fill it up. And that will guarantee that every, all these little nail holes and tacks, and if there was any little infestation, that it, it all the little wormy holes would be filled. And you fill them with baking soda. And all the more reason, if you build your first guitar, make sure it's paint grade. Because when you do when you do run your jigsaw a little bit wild, even though you know better than doing stuff like this, uh, you didn't drive it up into a piece of three hundred dollar hundred mahogany. Always work with really affordable stuff. But as I mentioned, be very conscientious of how you're roughing out your materials so you're not wasteful. Okay. So do a quick flyby with the flying V. This is the initial uh, initial router work. You see the quarter sawn there. This is probably the most beautiful corner right there. It's just really stunning. Very cool. And uh, it's a great piece of wood. Uh, I might let me check the time. 13 minutes. I don't want this to go very long. It took over four hours for the last video to upload. 20 minute video. Uh, if you have earbuds, uh, pull them out. Or if you have uh, your volume control, turn your volume control down because this could be brutal. Uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time to, uh, you know, not freak out. I'm not going to just slam into it, but I want you to hear what you're looking for when you're building a guitar. I call this tap tone. You're testing the tap tone. All right, three, two, one. Are you ready? Okay, 
That's uh, that is an incredible tap tone. So that's what I meant by this old quarter sawn uh, pine. Uh, it's not it's not stain worthy or clear coat worthy unless you were building like a, a a barn caster, you know, or the pine caster or whatever they call them. I don't know. So uh, let me let me think what else I might want to talk about in this video. Uh, body construction, maintain body squareness. Oh man, so glad I looked at that note. The most important thing that you need to be considering is squareness. Anywhere you put this tool, it needs to be square. If, it, if it's not, it's not the end of the world, but it's going to make your job very difficult, okay? Uh, so, uh, and even little things like this right here, I don't know if that's in the camera, I hope it is, but that lets you know that your initial planer work was very precise, your template laid down when you were doing all your routing work was very precise, it, there, every, every, everything that you did was machined very true, and uh, that's critical. As, as this body starts getting really thick, because there's a possibility one of these guitars, I'm going to build it uh, substantial, the one that might receive the B5 Bigsby, and I'm talking uh, two and a quarter of an inch. So that stuff's really critical when you're when you're working with a guitar, because if you start getting off and funky, you'll take a measurement up here from here to here, and then you might try to go back to the back because you're transferring and then you're off an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch. Not talking about any anything negative. I'm just saying that if you if you start out with a poor uh, job, just know where the problems are and, and work around them. Would it matter if this if this wing was different? Uh, it could be considerably different. We're talking like a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, and it's not all that really that important. Even this center line, it is critical, but if you foul up the wing and you have to move that center line, then then don't worry about, you know, where, where the glue line is, is what I'm saying. So, and I shouldn't have started talking about that because that sounds sounds like negative conversation. But uh, nonetheless, just be prepared to uh, try to keep it real nice and true. And if you lose it, don't, don't can the project, just work around uh, the mistake, all right? Uh, let me check the uh, note again. Maintain body squareness benefit of paint grade. Uh, oh, one and five eighths inch minimum, one and seven eighths inch maximum. Uh, there you have it. Just just take take heed to those numbers. This one's one and five eighths of an inch, and uh, the last one I built, uh, the guitar that I sold to Josh uh, up in uh, Boston. Massachusetts, uh, he, uh, well, everybody knows Boston is Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, his was one and seven eighths of an inch. It was, it was a big guitar. It was popular, and, uh, which is really cool. And uh, I'm getting ready to, uh, I'm getting ready to do some epoxy work. So I just wanted you to see uh, what this antique pine looks like when you start wetting it it's just a stunning wood now am i saying that we want our uh flying v to look like that nope but if you're doing a telecaster you're pretty much already in the honey amber maple family and you didn't even have to do any stain work so uh that's pretty cool that's the old rust from the nails uh Nonetheless, uh, and, and I'm just, I'm not doing this to show off. I'm doing this because I'm actually getting ready to do all the uh, epoxy putty work. That way it can be dry uh, for tomorrow. Uh, that is a paint thinner can, but that's actually lacquer thinner that I have poured in there. And uh, it's, it's an old can, and I like it because it has a uh, easy to remove uh, lid. It just screws off. It's not child safe or anything, but uh, anyway, beautiful. So, 
And uh, it is what it is. Do that one more time and then I'll stop. Probably melt that foam if I put it on that foam. So I better not, better not do that. I'm just going to prop it up. And uh, is that the good side or the bad side? That's the good side. All right, I'm going to end the video right there. I hope it didn't go over 20 minutes. I think it's right at 20 minutes. Uh, what I'll do is uh, I've got a lot more work to do uh, before I do another video. So I'll just uh, get busy, um, you know, working on the other. Because I'm building, I, th I think right now I've actually moved it up. I'm building three flying Vs. And I don't want to start trying to show all of them. We'll just stick to this one little project right here. And then uh, eventually I'll introduce the, uh, the Honduran mahogany ones that I'm working on because they're going to be pretty cool as well. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you staying in the ring. And I'll see you in the next video.